And also you blessed us and in, uh, in our internets with um, your appearing in 69 Minutes, our yes, special. I can't wait. That, uh, is, there's like, I, I've been telling people we, we put this thing together. This was like this ambitious, just yeah. fun thing that everybody has been busting their ass on. But to have it be what we wanted it to be, people like you yeah. had to get involved. Is this and, is this going to be a show show like all the time? I don't know. Like we, you know, this is funny. we produced, like we, we, I tell, I tell the pot, we produced an episode of television. That's what it is. With nearly 900 million views on his YouTube channel, two massively successful comedy podcasts, four Netflix comedy specials, and a wild stand-up world tour, Tom Segura is technically one of the biggest comics out at the moment, which would naturally make you think that he's probably also one of the funniest. However, how does one of the best comics at the moment put out one of the worst pieces of comedy content ever? Because last week, YMH finally released Tom Zagura's comedy special, which he has been hyping up for weeks, claiming that it was essentially a TV episode, a parody that would include all your favorite comics, and it would be behind a paywall. Now, usually when a comic releases their content behind a paywall, it's most of the time is because the content or the jokes are way too edgy and, and way too much to be posted on a platform like YouTube or, or, or another platform like that. But that wasn't the case with this comedy special. I and mean, look, there is a chance that maybe either A, Tom Segura knew that he was selling a low quality, low effort product and he was just lying to everybody. Or B, he actually thinks that this was a great product and it was essentially his best effort in which case it would be a similar situation as uh whitney's uh, whitney cummings last netflix comedy special which we actually reviewed in this channel and the thing that was very interesting to me about that comedy special wasn't the fact that it wasn't that funny or funny at all but instead it was her being in complete denial and even going on joe rogan's podcast i know that you guys laughed and if anyone says this isn't good they're judging you like i went all over the country i went everywhere and um i just really feel good about that that's great like this has worked everywhere for a while Boom! now obviously tom didn't go that far but he did claim that he shot this essentially as like a tv episode which I don't know, it couldn't be farther from the truth. It almost felt like it, if they just rushed it and put it together at the last second, at the last minute, because they realized that they didn't have anything to put out for the fans for the end of the year. And once again, if this was actually Tom Segura's best attempt at putting together a TV episode, then this was essentially his uh, Gringo Poppy and You'd Be Surprised combined. Because not only was it, you know, a low quality production in terms of video quality and all that stuff, but... Uh, there was also almost zero jokes and funny segments in the entire comedy special. It wasn't literally until the last eight minutes of the of the show, of the episode, that it was actually funny. And look, if you're a big Tom Segura fan, I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed it. This video is not for you. But if we look at this objectively for what it is, and it's essentially a $10 piece of digital content that was uh, rented to me for two weeks, um, looking at it from that perspective... Is it really worth it? Now, the first 12 minutes of the special wasn't that bad. It was essentially a sketch, uh, a reference for the hardcore fans to enjoy. Basically, Tom Segura asking people if washcloths are for the poor. However, my only criticism of the whole thing, of the whole sketch, is the insane light reflection on Brian Simpson's glasses during the entire interview. I mean, come on, what are we doing here? And, and look, I've had reflections on my glasses before on other videos. But I'm, I'm in my office with very basic lighting, not in a professional studio. And even if I turned this way far enough, you, you should be able to see the reflection or this way far enough. So I just don't do that. But when it comes to Tom Segura, it makes, me, it makes me think that either A, the entire crew wasn't prepared and they were not experienced in this type of setting or, you know, recording a, uh, a fake documentary, a mockumentary, or B... They only had that one take, that one shot with Brian Simpson, and they essentially messed it up. Because if you had many takes, how is it possible? How does somebody miss that insane reflection on his glasses? And Tom Segura himself said that they were using the 60-minute show, the actual show, as a guide or as parameter for what his show was going to be. But... 60 minutes definitely doesn't have reflections on on glasses and even the even sketch shows like key key and peel they have very tiny reflections for a split second on their sketches but it's nowhere near as bad as tom segura 
on his own on his 60 minute 69 minute show but then they get into the next bit which is essentially christina p trying to figure out if she wants to cover her tattoo or completely remove it which is i guess it's good content or better content for the fans but it wasn't really that funny now at least i do gotta give her props for putting herself in that position and actually making fun of herself because that's something that tom segura never does in this comedy special or you know ever at all however the one thing that actually caught me by surprise and i really enjoyed was whitney cummings appearance and, and we'll get to it because the whole jail bit the whole sketch wasn't the best i mean laura uh, laura compton i think that's her name she did a good job presenting the whole sketch but it was essentially just comics saying the most basic things ever even joe les who i think of as a funny guy felt really stale and not funny at all now keep in mind that i did have some drinks while watching it i was really trying to give it a fair shot and, and enjoy the content but the first 20 minutes were just boring it was really miserable until whitney cummings appeared on the screen because sure wh whatever she was saying it was just boring and very basic stuff but in the middle of it while i was watching her stuff i was thinking to myself wait this was shot recently this was filmed recently there's no way that somehow she mentions that she's pregnant, right? I mean, it doesn't go with the joke. She's in a jail. She's in a jail. It just doesn't fit, right? Like, there's no way she would actually. And then, bam, she actually does it. She showed her belly and then starts showing her. Silly me thinking that she wouldn't do something like that, you know, like bringing up her pregnancy or talk about something that she always talks about. It was so silly. That would be like expecting Burt Kreischer to not take off his shirt uh, and, and not talk about doing arenas. But after watching Whitney's appearance on the comedy special, it got me thinking, there is no way that Tom Segura actually thought that that was top tier comedy that was worth putting behind a paywall. Like no shot, right? Because think about it. Whitney Cummings is an actual good writer. She writes for shows, TV shows and comedy roast. So either somebody else wrote that and they gave it to her or maybe Tom Segura just told her to improvise anything and whatever she did would be good enough for the show i'll try to make this one quick but the bit about danny brown going to play pickleball and asking uh older white folks uncomfortable questions it's actually a funny premise I, I think i think it has potential but the video was a little bit off and just felt like a rushed youtube video i mean danny brown a lot of the times was out of focus the shots were overexposed and uh sometimes they actually just used 720p footage that you know i don't know what happened or how they got that but I mean, it, that was mainly production issues. Um, everything else overall was was pretty good. Danny Brown did a good job. After that, halfway through the special, they actually went on a long sketch showing uh, Tom Segura trying to reconnect with RPC, who again is a podcast meme. But you'd have to be a longtime fan to really know what's going on and appreciate it. And this is when the guys from the Are You Garbage podcast show up for like two minutes and then have some some of the most basic dialogue with Tom Segura. It's nothing crazy, but then after re-watching those shots, it kind of made me realize something. Is, uh, is Tom Segura trying to become the fit Louis C.K.? But then they actually show Tom Segura meeting this person who they've been making fun of for a really long time. And... I don't know the whole thing just felt really weird it wasn't that funny and although i have seen tom segura bring up that guy the rpc guy to other to other guests in the past a long time ago and back then it was kind of funny now it just felt weird and, and look i'm sure tom segura paid him and made him you know made him worth his while but again the whole thing just kind of fell off i don't know you'd have to watch it to tell me no to let me know what you think but it just felt weird now the last 20 minutes before tom's mom charo comes in was essentially a mix of uh tom learning how to properly be on a date uh table manners and and then stavros reading a book to kids which i mean again i, I like stavros and i think he's funny but that just wasn't that funny and i'm sure it wasn't his idea i'm uh, you know i'm pretty sure he was just doing what tom told him to do but it wasn't it wasn't that funny and we've also seen something similar with bobby lee and theo vaughn back in the day when they did it for comedy central now at this point i was completely miserable just trying to get through the the comedy special and finish it and then finally the last nine minutes or the last eight minutes are really really funny it's it's so weird because you know it, dra it drags on for so long i was literally waiting for a whole hour for something funny got nothing and then you know towards the end 
uh, they have a bit which you know funny enough it was probably the 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 lowest cost uh out of all of them it was probably the cheapest thing to do because it was just tom segura his mom a table and they were in front of a green screen and the whole bit was uh his mom charo reading rap lyrics which the bit was hilarious it was actually really really funny and obviously tom segura thought the same thing he thought it was funny and that's why he put it at the end of the comedy special so that way when people leave you know they click off they think ha huh, that wasn't so bad so then the question is well is it worth it and look if you bought it just to support tom zagura and because you like him that's fine but keep in mind that the point of comedians releasing their content behind a paywall or on another platform like patreon it's so that yes you can support them directly with your money but also it offers you better content and higher quality content in terms of no censorship and the comics uh, being able to be themselves and actually creatively give you their best. And look, YMH has done that before. They, they used to do the live streams behind a paywall because of the type of content that they would show. Obviously, could not go on YouTube, but this one felt nothing like that. It almost felt like they had the last bit, the, the nine minutes of uh, Charo and Tom Segura. And they, th and they knew they couldn't release that on YouTube because for obvious reasons, both the, the songs and then um, his mom saying what she said. So then they just made up or they found a way to uh, fill the whole thing with 60 minutes of just uh, just random content that, and then sell it as a comedy special called 69 Minutes. Because think about it, the last bit, which was him and his mom have nothing to do with the, con the concept of a mockumentary. It, it was just random. And look, if Tom was advertising this as something they were doing for the first time, and if you want to support it, you can buy it, that would have been totally fine. But Tom Segura was legit pitching this. He was selling this as a TV quality uh, piece of content that uh, featured all your favorite comedians, which I guess they did. They, 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 they appeared on the comedy special, but it was more like a quick cameo. It didn't feel like they had uh, an actual role or things written for them. And look, if the whole thing was actually TV quality, then that would have been fine. You know, they tried to make a funny TV show or whatever, and they failed. Nothing wrong with that. But to pitch it as a TV show quality uh, piece of content and then have it be not better than like a decent YouTuber while being Tom Segura, one of the biggest comics out there, one of the richest comedians and having access to a lot of people and a lot of things and a lot of resources, it just makes this kind of unacceptable. Think about it. It would be like if Joe Rogan opened up his club and then the day of everybody got there and just saw the most basic comedy club with no remodeling, leaky ceilings, and then bad comedy. Everybody, everyone would be like, what the f Joe Rogan, it would be a fair response. Also, keep in mind that Louis C.K. was actually Tom Segura's age when he made Louis, which is arguably one of the best shows out there and still holds up. And you could actually buy it for like 30 bucks for all the seasons and uh, his newest comedy special for like 10 bucks. So that's a good comparison. And also, I used to be a big Tom Segura fan and I actually thought that he was one of the best comics out of the Rogan sphere. And, you know, I guess it makes sense that after a lot of comics got canceled in 2020, he was able to take a lot of that fan base and, and fill in that void, which there is a chance that maybe it made him appear funnier than he really was. Or maybe he just stopped trying because it was this year, this past year and a half that made me really start changing my mind about Tom Segura. But I mean, who knows? Maybe he is doing this for his new TV show that he said he was uh, he already sold to someone that had already promised it and uh maybe he is focusing all of his energy on that and once it comes out it'll be you know a worldwide uh success and uh we were all wrong about tom segura but if that show comes on if it comes out and it and it's trash it's gonna be a tough time but yeah let me know what you think in the comments below leave a like and subscribe to support the channel dislike if you didn't like the video but that is all we have for today see ya